This is a short video which shows how to set up a Coastal Swan wave model. We have used our case study area of the southeast coast of St Vincent as an example, but you will not be receiving the full detailed topography for this case study. We are using the Swan wave model uh, because it is a third generation spectral wave model. It has all the capabilities of more complicated models but it's very easy to use. It has a good user interface with a useful toolkit so you can really apply it quickly in a given coastal region. The extent of the coastal wave model is shown in the red box in the left panel. The first thing you need to do before you can get started is download the SWAN code itself. If you go to the link shown and click on download the latest version on the green button. This will get the mo model executable. Uh, the model itself is written in Fortran, but if you do not want to get into the innards of the model, you do not need to work with this. You can simply get the executable and there's no need to compile the code. So then you also can go to another link uh, shown here, which is the Delft University um, link. Uh, where the SWAN model was developed and download the implementation manual and the user manual. The user manual is very useful. It gives you some background material on the physics in the SWAN model and then it gives a whole section on the actual commands in the SWAN control file and what the options are. So that's uh, worth having. If you intend to use SWAN regularly, it's very useful to subscribe to the mailing list where you'll get help about any problems that arise. And SWAN was originally developed and supported by the Office of Naval Research in the USA and nowadays partly supported by Reichswaterstadt. Um, the, the model development was carried out in the uh, over the last 30 years um, and is now a very large, um, it's a large commu user community, it's very widely used. Once you've downloaded the SWAN um, source files, etc., well, the executable, you need to install it on your computer by running the setup um, command that you've just downloaded. This um, will install it on Windows, or you can actually use the, um, the, the SWAN model on Linux if you prefer. In order to run SWAN on Windows, choose SWAN from the start menu, which will open a command line window and change the directory to the location where you want to save your SWAN control and input files. So then you need to set up the model extent. In this case, um, we've chosen to install, um, generate a, a model setup for the southeast corner or southeast coast of St. Vincent, uh, which contains the uh, Argyle International Airport. Um, we've chosen to orient the grid on along shore with uh, an extent of about 20 kilometers long short and nine kilometers cross shore. And the grid has 200 grid cells along shore, 90 cross shore. And the resolution of that is around 100 meters. It's actually more like 92 meters, but um, we're kind of choosing that, that order of resolution. Then you need to generate bathymetry um, containing um, real or synthetic data in the required format. The simplest thing is to use a text file with data arranged from the bottom left corner or the top left, row by row, which is what I've done here. You will get a bathymetry file, you'll be able to open it and you can see the way, it, way it's arranged. Um, the bathymetry has, in this case, has been extracted from the JEBCO um, World uh, Global World Ocean um, Bathymetry Database, uh, which has a resolution in this case of about one kilometer worldwide and it's freely available. That's the link where you can get it. This uh, this is provided in the text file, which um, uh, I've supplied, and there's no need to interpolate the bathymetry onto the model grid because one does this anyway automatically. Um, we've we have later further merged this with the lidar data that was observed for the coastal zone of Saint Vincent, which gives more accurate coastal bathymetry. But we're not sharing this. For the demo, download the control file. Um, sv100m.swan and bathymetry file, which is the name is given there from this link, 
and you will also see a PDF file which contains step-by-step -step instructions in order to do this exercise. In order to get started, we extracted Jebco 30 arc second, approximately one kilometer resolution bathymetry for the area around St. Vincent, which is shown here. Um, the link to go and get Jebco data is given and it's free to download. Um, we chose to download the bathymetry on a, a one kilometer grid aligned with the wave model, but you can actually interpolate. It Swan can interpolate from a different resolution bathymetry file, so you do not need to necessarily get um, the same exact um, area, but you need to make sure that the, the bathymetry extends beyond the area of, of your model. This is the model control file for running Swan, and it's really quite simple. Certainly you can get a very uh, first order look um, and run the wave model without worrying about um, using more complicated um, physics and so on. What, what we have here, if you look at the lines which are not um, commented out by a dollar sign, um, then the first actual uh, command, there's some headers, but the first actual command is set naught in the left hand column. This tells the model that you're going to be running in the nautical convention for wave, wind and wave directions, which is from the north, in other words, um, relative, you know, uh, compass direction. And uh, the second is coord sphere, S-P-H-E, which stands for spherical. This means it's using Laclon coordinates. You can also use Cartesian coordinates. But if you're going to embed it in a larger area wave model up to a global model, then it's actually useful to use spherical coordinates. Uh, the next command, and one of the most important, is C grid at the top of column two. In this case, you've got um, uh, several numbers and the manual, the user manual tells you exactly what these are, so that's useful to know, but basically we've got the coordinates in latitude and longitude, or longitude then latitude I should say, of the origin of the model, which is 61 degrees west and 13 degrees north, and then the next number is actually telling it that the grid is tilted by 71 degrees um, from the horizontal, if you like, X coordinate would be longitude. Um, it's actually tilted by 71 degrees. So the, um, the, the along shore axis is actually the X axis, if you like, it, but it is angled at 71 degrees towards the north, so um, from east. You can see this when you look at, at the grid, and this is a very useful feature to use because often you really only want to um, to have a simple rectangle which might be aligned with um, a certain part of the coastline, and this is what we've done in this case. Uh, the next number um, tells you the overall extent of the model in, in uh, degrees. Now this is actually really only um, advise for quite close to the equator because we've actually got a, um, a model which is, it's really uh, in, in extent, it's about 20 kilometers long and uh, nine kilometers wide, and, but that's given in degrees. And so that is obviously an approximation, but um, close enough at this point. Um, and then the next two numbers, 290, are the number of grids in the alongshore and the crossshore direction. And the next uh, the next part of the of the numbers, it begins with the word circle, and then it says 24, and, and it has, um, that means it is using the full 360 degrees wave directions, and it's divided into 24, um, which is actually a 15 degree resolution. And then the final numbers are about the frequency resolution in the model, and it starts at 0.05 hertz and it goes up to 0.5 hertz, and it has 25 frequencies. These are logarithmically spaced. You don't really need to worry about this at the moment, but if you want to get into the model more in the future, you can look into varying these numbers. But basically it means it covers the wind wave spectrum from about... Um, two seconds to 25 sec to 20 seconds, which is, is main, the main energy in, in the wind waves. So the next um, uh, command is input grid. 
This is a very important command. In this case, the only input grid we're reading is the bottom, in other words, the topography. And if you look at that, it has similar numbers to the line before, whereby it gives the origin and um, then the angle. And um, this number then, after, after 71, we have 20 and 9. And the reason for that is because we're actually using this uh, uh, 30 second resolution bathymetry file, so it's actually a tenth of the resolution. It's in other words, it's much coarser. It's ten times as coarse as the uh, the model grid. Because we only have data in, from Jebco at about one kilometer resolution, this is the best we can do. And as I say, it will interpolate that onto the model grid. It's not really a problem at this stage as a demo, but if you want to really get good coastal um, wave um, model results, then you, you're going to have to give it better bathymetry. And this is where having LiDAR data would come in. So the next command says read input bottom, and then it gives the name of a file, which is where the data uh, resides. And then it has a number one and then free. This is telling it that the, the way that the data is oriented in the file. And number one is reading from the top left hand corner of the data and then it's also putting it on um, a row by row um, grid. So there's a new line for each row. This I find is quite helpful to actually be able to view the data and just check that you've got the right amount of numbers. Because the other key thing to note about that bottom grid file is that you must have one more number in the rows and the columns than the um, grid size. So the grid size is 20 by 9 you actually have 21 by 10 numbers because they are actually specified at the nodes rather than at the centre of the grid faces. I hope that makes sense. It does become more obvious when you when you try it later. Um, the next is just a comment line about um, having steady winds. This is what we've done in this case is run it with a trade wind, which is quite a, um, a, a light wind of five metres per second from the east northeast. Um, and it's just noting that if you want to change it, you could have a 15 meter per second, which would be more like a, a strong trade wind. And then 25 meters per second would reflect um, at the low level storm winds. So you can um, next on the, on the next line, we have wind 5 and 80, which means 5 meters per second from direction of 80 degrees relative to north. So then we have another comment about the boundary wave input. And we have chosen to provide this in the form of um, a Johns Watt spectrum, whereby you give a, a wave height, a period and a direction and a directional spread. And the model um, constructs the, the input wave spectrum along the boundaries. And so here we have um, three boundaries which are open, the east, north and south, and we specify the waves along those boundaries. The next command is Gen 3. That means it's a third generation. It's running the third generation wave model. There are simplified versions of the physics which use Generation 1 or Generation 2 wave physics. We're setting it up with gen Generation 3. It does take longer to run, but in this very simple model, it doesn't take long to run at all. The model will only take a few seconds to run. The next one is that you're switching on braking. And then friction is going to be determined by the Madsen coefficient. Again, these are choices we've made. You can change those once you know a bit more about the inner workings of the wave model. Then the next section on the third, on the third column is actually um, providing the output specifications. So where do you want to get output from your model? And you have three types of output that you can get. In fact, here we've only got block output but you can also have line output and point output. So you can just choose to output the full spectrum at a, at a single point, which we've done for certain cases to compare with the data at the AWEC, for example. Anyway, the, um, the group command just specifies the, um, where the model points are, and it's basically giving all of the model points, 1 to 200 and 1 to 90. Um, and then you have block grid and no headers and you write a file called sv100m.mat. That file is very useful if you have MATLAB, you can just import it, load it into MATLAB in other words, and then you can plot all the parameters inside and you can see the names of the parameters. On the continuation of that line, you can see that there, uh, it has various parameters which include depth, 
significant wave height HS, peak period, um, and direction, peak and mean direction, etc. There are various um, additional um, output parameters you don't need to worry about at this moment. The main one is just to look at the, the period and direction and, um, and wave height. So then we have um, another file which actually just writes out the coordinates of the grid points, which XP and YP, and that's called grid100m.mat. Again, if you use that in conjunction with the first uh, MATLAB file, then you have got um, everything you need to plot the data on a, on a map. Um, and then finally, we've got um, a, just a text file called sv100m.block. If you want to simply use it and import it into an Excel spreadsheet, for example, you can use that file. Um, and then after the output, um, we then have um, another dollar sign. Then we have compute and stop. And that's basically running the model. In order to run SWAN, you need to type the word SWAN in the start menu for Windows, and that will then open a command line window as shown on the right. You need to change to your working directory wherever you've placed the .swan control file, and then type SWAN run and the name of the control file without the extension on the command line. And then the model will run and it will report progress as you can see in the panel on the right. It actually does several iterations in order to converge the solution based on certain criteria, which you can change, but you don't need to know about for, for basic setup. Um, and this is called a stationary run. And the stationary run just performs the coastal shallow water wave transformation from offshore to the coast for a single time point. So in other words, until the waves are in equilibrium with the wind and the offshore boundary conditions that you provide. Non-stationary runs can also be carried out for a time series using time variable forcing, wind and boundary conditions, which you can then either read from a file or specify within the SWAN file. So here we have the output from the run that I've just um, shown you. Once you've run the model and you get the MATLAB file, the, um, the MATLAB um, array file, the .mat file, you can import it and, and plot various um, parameters. Uh, first of all, plotted on the left is the water depth, and you can see that the water depth goes from um, naught near the coast. Obviously, it's quite shallow over the blue area, and then it rapidly goes down to about 600 metres. So there's, there's a, um, it's, it's not really a shallow water area. It's close up to the coast, it's quite deep. And then you look at the right-hand panel and you've got the significant wave height in meters. And this um, starts at the boundary where we've imposed it as two meters. Um, and then it basically is only changing very close to the coast. But there are a couple of interesting things you can see. You can see a slight increase in wave height around the headland to the north. And you can see that there are decreases in the wave height into the embayments. So headlands tend to focus the waves onto them and the inner bay, the, the waves will spread out and be, be reduced in height. And you can see all of the headlands have a little yellow dot around them, close to them. And then in the embayments, the, the, the wave height is reduced. And of course, it's, it's being dissipated as it closes with the shore. And it's, uh, it's experiencing um, various processes like depth limited breaking which are important and reduce the wave height close to the coast. As I said, you won't get very much detail from this model because it's only got very coarse bathymetry. If you are interested, you can try some further exercises. For example, you can try running the model in non-stationary mode, i.e. the time sequence with varying wind or boundary waves. Try some of the example files provided from the SWAN website, accessible from the SWAN homepage or from uh, the uh, SourceForge website. And this example is the Haring Fleet Estuary in the Netherlands, but there are also some idealized test cases. Or you could modify the St. Vincent model to represent your area of interest, changing the latitude and longitude um, and the coastal alignment and extent, and then downloading some new Jebco bathymetry. So that's it folks.
it uh, should be relatively easy to run this at this point and re reproduce the um the results for this demo and uh, if you have any pro any problems please do email me